we will start the session on HCM reporting. So today we will be learning how to develop reports on HCM module by the help of BI Publisher and by OTBI. So our sole concern will be creating the report. Uh, so before start, so we will try to cover three things over here. First is why we are creating reports on HCM or precisely which reports we should create and the de detailed navigation in OTBI and in BI Publisher for creating report. Before starting this, uh, we'll go about little bit about human management or SCM. So would you take the, like to someone explain what is SCM or what it deals with? So when we talk about human or human capital management or SCM, mm. human capital management is the comprehensive set of practices for recruiting, managing, developing and optimizing the human resources of an organization. So the main functions of SCM, generally SCM softwares are organized in the following category like we have a core HR, talent management, workforce management and we have different service delivery. So the SCM suits also typically have technologies that cut across the functional areas notably the analytics, social media, collaboration and most likely the employee engagement. Before learning about BI Publisher and OTBI, we need to learn a bit about data warehouse. So are you aware about data warehouse? So now we'll see what is a data warehouse because reporting is mostly dependent on that. So a data warehouse is a relational database that is a design for a query and analysis rather than for a transaction processing. So here the main two words to ponder upon is, one is to query and the other one is to analyze. So mainly we we'll see towards getting an answer from a data warehouse. There are generally two main notably things which are there for data warehouse. The first one is OLTP and the second is OLAP. OLTP process is online transactional processing and OLAP is online analytical processing. So now what does this two term mean? Online transactional processing means suppose the transactions which we are doing in the bank, the daily transactions which are happening. So those are also recorded in the database. So they have a typical features of OLTP and OLAP. So as the name suggests OLTP, so there are numerous transactions which are happening every day. There are simple queries which are fired for OLTP. So OLTP is categorized by a large number of short online transactions like insert, update, delete. The main emphasis of OLTP system is put on very fast query processing. Why? Because suppose you go to an ATM, you pull out some money, so the records have been, has to be updated then and there. So fast processing is one of the most important criteria for OLTP process. Second is maintaining the data integrity in multiple access environments and an effectiveness measured by number of transactions. Whereas OLTP is categorized by relatively low volume of transactions and in this queries are generally very complex which involves different type of aggregation function like sum, count, average etc. For OLAP we have a particular type of a schema which we need to design to get the result. So suppose where we just use this thing is mainly suppose whenever like where we use OLAP what is the need that this concept has grown up. Suppose there is a particular vendor who wants to select the topmost manager of a particular region who has made the most sales in that quarter. So when I, when I say the statement, I am asking the database 
or the data warehouse for a particular answer. So in my this query, I have asked for lot of information to be gathered before answering the question. So when I ask, you kindly may provide me the name of the manager of Eastern location from the first quarter of the year who has made the most of the sales. So can you just tell me how many tables do we need to answer this question? To answer, um, can you come again the question? Yeah, so, uh, sure. A particular vendor, a particular vendor of a particular suppose a food retailer wants sure. to reward the best manager of the eastern zone of the first quarter of the year uh -huh. for the topmost sales. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many tables, it all depends on how, how it was designed. Yeah, so do you think uh, all these things can be put in a one table? No, there's going to be multiple tables for region and, and sales yeah. and, and vendor, yeah, all these, yes sir. Yeah. So there are more than one table. So yeah. the, whenever a query will be fired, so first of all we understand this query will not be a simple query. It will right. be a complex query. And we are asking the data warehouse for an answer. So we have to join three more, more than three tables. So from this question of mine we understand we have table like region which will answer my eastern region question. Second will be my employee detail table from where I will pull out the manager. The third table will be the quarter table or the time table which will capture all the time. And the fourth table will be the a particular table which will record all the sales. We can also include a, a product table also which will answer the best product also for that manager. So here we can understand, so we can see there are four rectangles. So this is uh, what I am I'm trying to answer the question which I have asked. So these are the four tables we have. Yes. These are the four tables which we have and the, so these four tables are known as dimension tables. And what are dimension tables are? Dimension tables have mostly a static, static type of data which changes over a long period of time like, like the product name or product description, a timetable, a region table, a employee table. And the long table which we have over here, the middle table which we have, this is known as a fact table. Fact table is the table which quantifies the dimension table. That means it will answer all the quantifiable answers for a particular dimension table. That means it will have all the data like the revenue, the amount sold, the profit made, discounts given. So all the things which we can measure are stored in the fact table. So and fact table and dimension table are joined by foreign key primary key relationship. So the fact table will contain, each fact table will contain all the foreign keys for the dimension table for which it is joined to. And this kind of a schema is known as a star schema. Topic. So the differences I will repeat again between OLTP, OLTP system and OLAP system. OLTP stands for Online Transaction Processing. OL, OL, OLAP system stands for Online Analytical Processing. The difference between both are like source of data. So source of data for OLTP is operational data and for OLAP it is the consolidated data. That means the sum of the data. So we have said we put the aggregation functions when we work on OLAP. Second point of distinction is the purpose of data. So the purpose of data is to control and run the fundamental business tasks that is OLTP. When we are running the fundamental business tasks that means we are recording the each transaction that is OLTP. 
and whenever we are planning to solve some problem or take a decision that is the OLAP system. So queries are simple in OLTP and complex in OLAP. Processing speed is very fast in OLTP and it depends with the amount of data in OLAP. So this is about OLTP and OLAP. Now we come to HCM where we see the different kind of reports or why the reports are there in the Oracle Fusion HCM. So Oracle Fusion HCM reports and analytics in this we have reports and analytics embedded in our dashboards and in our work areas. So this word dashboard has a particular meaning we will try to understand in the later part of the day. Then we have additional reports and analytics available in the form of reports and analytics in the pane of work area. So what is the use of this? We'll see to that. These reports will be useful to whom? Whenever we talk about HCM, we need to understand it is intended for HCM end users who use predefined existing analytics and report to assist them in their day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. Who are the end users of this HCM? User, usually HR, admin, HR users, HR administrators, maybe payroll yeah. managers. So the main are the benefit managers, the competition managers and the analysts, human resource managers and specialists, line managers and the payroll managers. So these are the people who are helped by this kind of HCM reporting. Now the reports and analytics which are for HR specialists, specialists and HR managers. There are particular kind of reports which are already present which we customize in HCM which are intended for HR managers. So which are those kind of reports? Like they are like talent summary report, goal plan development goal report, goal plan performance goals report, selective performance goals report. So these kinds of reports are present who are intended or which are intended for HR managers. Now there are different kind of reports which are present for which are present for line managers. They are like the compensation report, like cycle review, pay for performance, salary analysis, target analysis and distribution analysis. So these reports are used for line managers. So now we will learn by the help of first we will learn what is BI publisher or how to use BI publisher to construct a report. After we learn about BI publisher, how to construct a report, then we will go for specific HCM reporting. Does that make sense? So those who are like if you have not seen this page before, so we have different modules which are listed down over here related to the EBS. Okay. Cash management, fixed assets, environment, payables. Here is the username, test six procurement. So when you click over here, when you go down, you click on more, you go down under tools. You can write down this uh, navigation if you want to. Right under tools, we have report and analytics. So this is the place where ever you create any of the reports, they stay over here. Whenever you create and save a particular report, they stay over here. But, but this is the place where we can see the final output of a report or we can see or preview a report. But we have also been provided by the Oracle Fusion application in the cloud with, with specific URLs which will take you directly to the BI Publisher report. So what you need to do is, it is very important uh, to note down this part. You have to just put the URL till .com and after that you have to append it with XMLP server slash servlet slash home. So we'll try to understand the navigation in BI Publisher. On the top hand you can see a logo of Oracle BI Publisher Enterprise, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. So here you have a search button. So here you can uh, do a search in different labels like in folder, reports, data model, style template and sub template. After that you have a button called administration. Mm -hmm. When you click on administration, so this administration is specific for BI publisher. So when you open other uh, navigations and there if you 
press on administration there will be a particular tab called bi publisher and when you op click on that bi publisher these things will open up no no C can you come again and the second part so when you open obi in obi also you can create a bi publisher report through obi also since the next next tab of mine is the obi tab so through here also we can create a bi publisher report published reporting uh -huh. so here if you go to the administration section there is a specific tab called bi publisher manage bi publisher so if you click over here then you come to the same page for now we'll not look in the obi part we'll only concentrate on the bip reporting so when we click on the administration there are different tabs one is the data so one is security center delivery runtime configurations integration system maintenance mm -hmm. now what are these things we'll look at one by one before that vip whenever we develop a report through bi publisher there are three there are three instances or the three steps to it always we should remember the three steps then we can create any bi publisher report at any point of time the first step is creating a data model creating a data model is important because that is the data on which the report will be based okay. so the first our first and foremost the lookout should be creating of a data model Okay. The second part is the creation of the report layout. This is the most important part because here the company specific layout we have to put down in the report. Suppose company specific as in if the company logo is should be placed in the center, the dollar sign should be given to the currencies, or the timestamp should be proper in the report. So those important things come up in the layout. Which which bar which chart to put. For a proper for a proper output in the report layout. So the second thing is creation of the label layout, and the last part is creation of the report by associating the layout and the data model part. Mm -hmm. So there are three steps. First step is creation of the report. The third second step is creation of the layout. Third step is associating the layout and the data model, and above all, the final the step is. viewing the report viewing the report is the most important step because that is why we are creating the report so how we will view the report that is one of the most important step in creating a bi publisher report so the work of report layout design and data model design can go hand in hand because the layout design is independent of data model designing a data model can be a sql query which can be designed by two people and the other two people at the same time they can create the layout of it layout by layout i mean the physical layout of the report which you see so those are the steps to create a bip report so <laughs>